cannot let you take me to Not yet! So, it comes to this. I have no wish to fight, but this time, I cannot yield. Though the world may think me a mad, desperate fool, I will hold fast to my conviction.
Stars on high. War is great. It's over, Hermes. In the name of the Convocation, I hereby take Meteon into custody. 
and setting aside the matter of your nomination, you will come with us too. We require your knowledge to assess and resolve the situation. <clears throat> Meteon, I am so sorry, but that I could have listened to your report in full. Reflected upon its meaning and conveyed it to others. That they might reconsider their chosen course. But I have failed. And that wish will never be realized. However, ere our fates become the province of others, I bid you tell me just one thing. Was there happiness in those distant stars? Was there a reason for living? We conducted our search as per your instructions. We scoured historical records, communed with the spirits of the deceased. Heard the final testaments of the dying. Welcomed their shadowed hearts into our own. One race had striven to create a world bereft of animosity. They renounced relationships to avoid interpersonal strife. And in so doing, brought about societal collapse. One race had renounced war and devoted itself to the enrichment of its people. They were conquered. Though they destroyed the enemy in reprisal, they could not regain their former glory. One race had concluded that finite time was the root of all woes. Aspiring to shatter its shackles, they went in search of infinity. They discovered nothing is infinite and that neither time or death can be cheated. Disillusioned, they gave up on the future and themselves. One race had discarded all things that gave rise to sorrow, hoping to have only joy. They found joy lost its savor in the absence of sorrow and lost their will to live. The worlds apart, these peoples shared a belief. The belief that they had tried their best. That they had tried to fulfill their potential with every step and success. In the course of which, they learned the truth. That they would never be free of fear and sorrow, anger and despair, of loneliness, so long as they yet lived. Even now their souls cry out for oblivion, and to this song of anguish, I lend my voice. We lend our voice. Oh, beloved mankind, shimmering jewels of beautiful Atheris, rejoice, for we will free you from the cruel yoke of existence. There is no need to struggle in vain, for in nihility awaits salvation. You will know peace and serenity, and it will be beautiful. We will make our nest at the edge of the universe, a 
And there, in the dark of dead worlds, hoard sorrow and suffering. There we will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether-shrouded star. Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to a fairies. Who are you to decide our fate? To decree we live or die? Lost your mind? You heard what she said. She means to destroy us all, yet you'd still take her side? In the name of the star, we have discarded those creations that we deemed flawed. If we ourselves are flawed, it does not stand to reason that we too should be discarded. That is sophistry, and you know it! Perhaps it is. Perhaps I am wrong. Who is to say that you are right? Let us settle this with a determination. In my authority, as Chief Overseer of Elpis, I will make a judgment on man's fitness to exist. If he can learn to value all life and retain his will to live, even should his end be justified, he will surely find a way to avert his demise. If not, he will perish in star. As with all determinations, provisions must be made to ensure fairness. Kairos! Awaken! Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. Awaiting instruction. Command. Universal memory alteration. Target area, Catesis Hyperborea. Starting point. Arrival of Emmet Selk, with the convocation at Propylion. End point. The present. Erase the memories of all events, and replace with a vague recollection of the following. I was here. Preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to Emmet Selk and Hithidaeus. Meteon's shared consciousness became unstable. She and her sisters could not sustain their existence, and all dissipated with a burst. The resultant shockwave accidentally triggered Kairos which erased several days of memories from all present. Execute. Command acknowledged. Initializing. Three processes remaining to execution. Bravo. I dare say one would be hard-pressed to make it fairer. Everything that you told us Everything that has happened, the fact we've even met, it will all be gone. Go, Mitsu, to the edge of the universe, where none can reach you. Hermes, won't you come with me? 
If you were to shed your flesh, I should be able to carry you. <laughs> I will remain. As a man, I will oppose the oblivion you bring. Silly fool. Had you said yes, I would have granted you the gentlest end. As if we needed more pressure. No matter what, you cannot forget what happened today. For it is the key to saving your future. Your world. This fight is our fight. What comes after, our problem to contend with. Not yours. No. Your own struggle awaits, and no one else can take your place. You must flee this place with your memories in time, and I will see that you do. Now then, where is it? There you are, my little confluence. Meteon's gotten away. Second process complete. One remaining to execution. No. No time for brooding. Listen well. Beyond lies a spatial confluence that connects the interior sections of this building. I will destroy the confluence and force open a way outside. When I do, you must jump through. I cannot tell you how sorry I am, but neither can I let you escape! Too brave by half. Exemplary work, as always, Emmett Selk. What? But how? I thought the confluence was... over... Over there? Yes. We were rather hoping we would. It was never anywhere but where it is now. 
The instant those two began making their way towards nothing, t'was clear the plan was a diversion. I'm quite incapable of destroying a confluence, I must confess. A gambit brazen beyond words. Though we've grown accustomed to reckless improvision due to the antics of an incorrigible associate. Though, in the case of certain present company, incorrigible is an understatement. Honestly, I'm beginning to suspect it's a requirement for every asset. There's no time! Quickly! Even now, I do not believe your tale. I would not suffer us to walk such a wretched path. Still, if it must be said... Do not squander it, the legacy I leave you. Final process complete. Executing universal memory alteration. I'm fine. Just a little tired. Can it be true? Are we the only ones left who see beauty in the world? In life? Are the stars above no more than husks of fallen civilizations? She is unimaginably distant. I feel Meteon's presence and the place where too we must go. Ere she made good her escape, I placed an enchantment upon her, one which allows us to follow her trail. She has already left the outermost bounds of Atheris and continues on her way. Given the vastness of the universe, it will still be no easy feat to track her down. But thanks to Emmet Selk and Hisladeus, all is not lost. We remember. So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. I'd like to know too. Let us ascertain the situation at Cotesis Hyperborea, where they should still be. Given the likely state of their memories, however, it would be imprudent for us to approach them directly, in which case... I'm sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. 
But may I trouble you one last time? Argos will investigate in our stead. We will share in his consciousness and see and hear as if we were with him. Now, close your eyes and open your mind. Goodness, you are unharmed. Unharmed? There is a gaping hole in my memories. I can scarcely remember arriving here in Elpis. Forgive me. I was preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to our guests. Meteon. Her shared consciousness became unstable. And she. she. So that's what prompted the state of alert. And when you went to investigate, you were caught in Kairos's accidental operation. So it would seem. It's all a blur to me. Such an unfortunate accident. Oh, and what of Vena and your other companion? You went inside together, as I recall. We did? If Vena was with us... I have no recollection of it. But that there is her familiar, is it not? The fellow seems happy enough, so I think it's safe to assume his mistress is well. I haven't the slightest notion who this other companion might be, however. Ah, well, that individual struck me as a bit different, for want of a better word. Perhaps it wasn't actually a person, but some manner of creation. Curious. I must ask Venar about it when next we meet. Yes, yes, you do that. Now, if we may tend to Hermes, whatever this Meteon did, it seems he bore the brunt of it. Once you are fit to travel, you will return with us to Amarot. We need to make certain there are no other ill effects. Also, I am here on business of the Fourteen. We've already had the conversation, like as not, but since your toy wiped my memory, we'll have to have it again. Yes, of course, as you see fit. This Kairos, it manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. I doubt aught of interest occurred. Look forward to the revelation if you like, but I should prefer to reminisce on more meaningful moments.
Let us rest. If only for a while. After all, you and I... Oh, we still have a long, long way to go. So, it is within. The portal that brought you hither, and will take you home. May you and yours emerge triumphant. Make use of the knowledge you have gained.
that your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. We must be ready. From fortifying our defenses to securing our escape, there is much to be done. In spite of this, we cannot allow the report that set this calamity in motion to become common knowledge. Were the masses to learn the fates of the other stars, I fear the situation would spiral out of our control. I must carefully consider who can be trusted, and bring them into the fold. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to call upon the Fourteen. However, it was the desire for a fair determination that drove Hermes to attempt to erase our memories. And were he made aware of his actions, there is no telling whether he would remain a friend or become a foe. Alternately, we might try to alienate him from the Convocation. Yet in doing so, we would deprive ourselves of a brilliant mind who would be invaluable in the crises to come. Quite the dilemma. Which is why I must work independently of the Convocation. Regardless of how we proceed, if we are to permanently avert the final days, we must be equal to Hermes's challenge. We must prove that mankind is worthy to exist. And this hinges, I think, on how we confront the all-consuming despair that accompanies a senseless and seemingly inevitable end. Bewildered and divided, we would perish like the peoples of those celestial ruins. We could not hope to survive the final days, much less take the battle to Meteon at her nest. We must find a way to defeat despair, to unite and prepare as many as possible for the struggle ahead. Heavy will weigh the burden of guiding this legion of souls. Yet I have faith in mankind's potential. As long as he believes in himself, there is naught he cannot achieve, so I will not give up on him, on us. You may find your world to be very different, or perhaps the erasure of our friend's memories has sown the seeds of a conjunction between us. We cannot know until the moment is at hand. So shall I strive to do my best, taking naught for granted as I walk my path. And I pray you walk with me to the end. As you move forward, so too will I, as will all, resolved to fight for the morrow. And when mankind has found the strength to stand against despair, we shall silence the song of oblivion.
She who sings it will learn our journey is far from over. This I promise. Fare you well, my light of the future, till we meet again. From this day forth, I shall strive to bring honor to the seat of Fandani. Even now, I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame. Where stars fall as tears, and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. That which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. Covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. Yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. 
And for too many, who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights. This is all wrong! Why must we suffer so? It needn't be like this. No. There must be a way to restore things to the way they were. To reclaim the perfect paradise we once had. No, my friends. Suffering exists. And we cannot pretend otherwise. No civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts, that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. We can't accept it! We won't accept it! It will be ours again! A world free of sorrow! No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom. It is weakness. No paradise is without its shadows. If we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain, then our plight shall be repeated. Mighty Zodiac, God born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old, the days when the star was a font of love, and we knew naught but bliss. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential, in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk.
all is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. I birth a world of suffering to mire and plague. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. To find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy, even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age.
No. 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 We were promised an escape. Not to the same no. No. I shall not meet my final days here in this blasted waste. Calm yourselves. Your panic is our greatest enemy. Come, we must build a line of defense. How? Leave the fighting to us, Father. You must lead the people to safety. I can handle this pair. You shall tend to the refugees. Let us be about it. <laughs> As you wish, my little lord. Command the beast's attention. See to the wounded. Help is at hand.
Help! Someone, please! What? Forward! Let not a single fiend escape! Wait, that's... Eulis and the army. So, you've recovered then? In time enough to be of aid, for once. We can speak of it more later. For now, we must fight! To repay your salvation in kind, or with better! For Garlimald has her pride! Of that I've no doubt. Saviors, the Imperial Army. Oh. I had hoped to take all of them down at once. Think a withdrawal might be in order? Oh, sod that. You know who would never abandon these people to their fate? be devoured by their former friends. That'll be beyond cruel. These beasts must fall here and now. Well then, I'd say it's high time we threw caution to the winds. So long as you spare me the heroic sacrifices. Now, let's go!
day. trace of ether. Maybe there really is no way to bring them back. Thank you for saving our lives once again. I remember you, from Purusha. You helped us there too, didn't you? Ah, oh, you're from Palaka Stand. I'm glad you're still in one piece. Or you will be, once I see to that injury of yours. Look out! Here, quickly. I won't lose them. Not a one. This will be a brighter future. I won't let a madman's apocalypse ruin everything we've fought to achieve. Never measure up to our champion. But we ask too much of him as it is. You mustn't let our sword in the darkness fight alone.
I can look after myself, you know. Everything's in order, I trust.
You must board without delay. The ship will depart ere long. Your offer to host us in Charlian is most appreciated. But will the final days not soon fall upon it as well? Your hesitation is not unwarranted. The satrap entrusted me with your lives, yet I have failed your comrades. Nor are you wrong to fear that this corruption will continue to spread. I cannot promise you complete safety, even in my homeland. What I can promise is that I will do all in my power to protect you. That power is not inconsiderable. Even now, my countrymen are preparing the vessel that will deliver us to a sanctuary on the moon. Join us on our journey there and beyond to new horizons. Come to old Charlian, please. We would be fools to refuse such a generous offer made in earnest. It seems they've a new destination. The people of Radzat Han have known too much suffering. The march to Garlemald will only bring them more. Short though it may be. I quite agree. Fortunately, they have you to look after them. Yes. Well... Behind you! Just there! Xenos! Here! You'll be alright. Hurry to the airship. Why have you come? A heretofore unseen beast. Twas ripe for the slaying. Poor sport, alas. Unfit to temper my blade. Oh, for the love of... You cannot still be on about a rematch. That is, and has ever been, my sole concern. You, on the other hand, are fixated on a different quarry. Your passion pales before mine, yet neither hate nor despair seems sufficient to recapture your misdirected bloodlust. So, I hone my blade, and I wait. That's 
That's it. That's all you care about. Garlemald is in ruins. Our homeland, the nation you rule, is as good as gone. Along with so many of its people. Not just soldiers like us. Not only those who fought and killed for power and duty. Innocent civilians. Murdered by their own flesh and blood. Lost and confused as they breathed their last. While we who survived with our lives and minds intact were left to freeze to death. The Eorzeans tell me all this was your doing. You slaughtered your countrymen. You did. For what? For nothing in the end. So much wasted effort. You... You bastard! For your own sake, Eulus, you must control your anger. It will serve no one should it consume you and see you transformed. Would you be happier had I a good reason? What? If my motives met with your approval, would you no longer resent the outcome? If so, then perhaps a beast's skin would suit you better. Duty, honor, morality. All constructs of convenience when put to proof. Surely the war taught you how easily power becomes the tool of the self-righteous. How the people's justice was merely a means to their ends? Yet you would ask me why. Ask any creature of this star and those above for answers, and they will tell you what suits their fancy. And they would be right to do so. What meaning there is to be found in the petty vicissitudes of your existence must be gleaned by you and you alone. Should you seek it in battle, in the fruitless pursuit of my demise, then come. Assume your rightful place, as a notch on my blade. You are a blight on the Garlean race. There would be no more satisfying way to expunge it than by beating you to death! But I will not be party to another tragedy. I refuse to lose anyone else because of you. So go. Go! And may we never suffer your madness again!
Xenos! Perhaps you found meaning in living this way. I cannot deny you found strength. Yet if you only pursue your hedonistic pleasures and pay no heed to the plight of others, then no one will give you the time of day. You will never get what you want, not even the battle you pine for so dearly. You'll be alone for an eternity, and you'll deserve every agonizing second of it. We're ready to depart. The refugee ships will be leaving shortly, but I've asked mine to remain for the time being. There's room enough for you to join me on it, if you wish. Do contain your surprise. I needn't agree with the Scion's methods or intentions to acknowledge that their deeds are deserving of gratitude. We appreciate the offer. But might I ask why you are delaying your departure? I presume it is not solely for our benefit. I must visit Garlemald ere we return to Charlion. Having caused such an uproar, it is only meet that I explain myself to the Ilzabad contingent. Allow us to accompany you, then. We should be glad to facilitate, given our familiarity with all concerned. If you would like to join as well, Eulus, we can speak of recent events on the way. He'll be off to your seat on the forum next.
No major injuries then. Good. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Forchano Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand, as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships have taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions were I expecting you to stab them in the back. And I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. We swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours. Do you swear to listen and to learn, and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us? I swear. Hmm. Any other I would doubt, but you I trust to keep your word. For not once have you broken it. Very well. I will request that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor.
Does that suffice? It does. You have my thanks. Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first while we wait. Did you hear something just now? banish even the darkest night, and to this bitter clime bring warmth and comfort. Tis heartening to see such an assembly upon my return. I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our star's brilliance from the moon above. Yes, but what are you doing here? And dressed like that? Aren't you cold? Verily. I fear for my health should I proceed to expound upon our purpose, ere I procure more suitable garments. Forgive me, but are they... Thy distant collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow, well met. You'd be a member of the forum. 
for him, would you? It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Livingway, Hydlin's right paw. That last bit is very important. As am I, if I may humbly say so myself. I, uh, bid you welcome to our star, Livingway. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for traveling such a distance to meet us. As you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlian, where you may advise us as you deem fit. Twas with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperids made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. Tis trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. No esteemed philosopher of Eld. Nevertheless, tis my hope that what little knowledge I shared shall serve them well, and perchance help save us all. Will thou attend us at the forum and lend thine own wisdom? If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Urianger catches his death? Even I'm freezing out here. Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends.
There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the Forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, at their request, on the Great Exodus. You may enter. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Radzat Han. The Sartrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Then let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these, but since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside... Are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete.
If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service, as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hells. Is there anything to be done? The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, you must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. It was simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti-Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. We would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course, if we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? As always, Master Alfino. <laughs> oh, we couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms?
71 in favor, 28 against. The ayes have it. Fortuneau, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Very well. I call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none.
could swap them out. No, been there, done that. Down near lost me eyebrows. Think, Coco, think! We'd be well on our way to paradise. Visionaries patting themselves on the backs for their grand accomplishments if you'd only think! Yes, that does sound rather lovely. Yeah! I mean, Master Force, you know, what a pleasant surprise. <gasps> We're not blasting off already, are we? The schedule remains unchanged, for better or worse. Which is why the Forum has elected to accept assistance in resolving the Etherburner conundrum. <laughs> not seen you lot down here before. There are Archons among their number, but engineering is not their expertise. Nevertheless, the Forum concedes the slim possibility that they may have insights to offer. If not, you are at liberty to return them to the surface, by whatever means you see fit. I assure you that won't be necessary. Now, about your troubles with the Etherburner. Aye, aye. I'll walk you through it. Suppose I could do with a change of pace. As the name ought to tell you, the Aoife Burner burns Aoife, ambient or otherwise, and transforms it into motive force. Think of it like a giant bomb that never stops exploding. Even out in that black void where the ether's right sparse, it's strong enough to move our arc. <laughs> and it probably won't kill you like an actual bomb. <sighs> but it ain't perfect. According to my calculations, to travel to the moon and back fast enough for the forum's liking, the conversion rate needs to be 6% more efficient. A measly 6%, you say? But if I could have squeezed even another 0.6 out of it, don't you think I'd have built it that way in the first place? Hast thou consulted with the Loperitz? Yes, they too are conducting their own research, for lack of a ready answer. The Moon's propulsion systems are considerable, naturally yet they are commensurately massive. It is no easy feat to convert their technology into an efficient means of propulsion for a teeny tiny toy boat, as they say, and as I most certainly do not. Yes, exactly! Damn it all, oh, I ask for a fine adamantite and they send me uppity rabbits with inscrutable, ancient, incompatible technology! You're trying to drive me mad! Do you speak of elegant refined adamantite, perchance? You know of it. Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. Twas an alloy of elegant make, but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Oi, that's the stuff. No material more conductive far as I know. Slotting some ends like blowing up a dam and watching the river of Aoife come rushing through. Ain't a living soul that knows how to make it, though. We were fortunate enough to salvage some for the ether burner, just a wee bit, mind, from a chunk of Dalamud that came hurtling into the northern empty during the calamity. With more? Well, that extra 6% efficiency will be child's play. It's a crying shame that we've no other sources. Surely the many shards of Dalamud scattered throughout Eorzea would suffice. Why not get the refined adamantite from them? Oh, <laughs> we tried, believe you me. But only a few specialised pieces would have had any in them to begin with.
Drive calls from Ragnarok class internment hulks. Those are the prize bits we really need. But according to the gleaners, getting to them means delving deep into the shards. And the defences are still very operational and very eager to blow them up. It's rough going in there, even for the cream. Not sure they'd make it out alive. Weren't we near that part of the Ragnarok when we went to destroy Bahamut? That may be for the best, though you doubtless find the task too dull for your liking. Hmm. There are multiple internment hulks in Eorzea alone, so handling this ourselves may not be the most efficient option. Rather, if we could salvage adamantite from the shards simultaneously... Thancred, is the link shell we established before you went to Garlemald still active? Of course. The floor is yours. What's all this? Gathering firewood, so to speak. We alone can accomplish little. But joined by others, we may yet build a bonfire to carry us heaven's ward. This is Alphano. The Scions have need of you. Dispatch our finest at once. My sisters are somewhat preoccupied with the final days, so I will lead the Twelveswood expedition myself. Are you aware of any other sources of refined adamantite? Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. Magical artifacts of Allegan design? The Eastern Alliance will send word to one and all. Are there other ways we may offer aid? No shards of the Lesser Moon scar our soil, but our stake in this cause is no less for it. Is there anything in Othered that might be of use to you? Othered, you say? <laughs> you got friends in far places, lad. Any road. If you're offering, I wouldn't say no to one of those Far Eastern sacred relics. Some of them can hold enough ether to summon a whole damn primal. Combine a source like that with the ether burner, and three, two, one, kaboom! I gather you heard his explosive enthusiasm. Might you secure us a suitable relic? It shall be done. I know little of machines, but I promise we will do our utmost to gather the materials you need to finish your starship. I am glad for the work, in truth. Better to busy oneself than wait and fret over disasters foretold. Then why are we all still standing about yapping? There's plunder for the taking, and I'm a born plunderer. I'll be an old Charlian before you know it. Start mixing the grog! 
I'm certain that can be arranged. Thank you all, and do be careful. Just like that. Aye, just like that. Our refined adamantite is on its way. Now let us consider our next steps, shall we? There's yet much to be done. Our course of action is clear. We must harvest refined adamantite from the shards of Dalamud and procure arcane relics of Allegan Make. Summon the best and brightest of our immortal flames and form an expeditionary party at once. Call upon the Sultan Sworn and brass blades for support as you must. Papashan. Send word to the guilds. We will require the expertise of master artisans if we are to have any hope of identifying and recovering these elusive materials. Fear, guys. We have need of your stone torches. They are to assist the immortal flames in scouring the ruins and to help secure the surrounding areas. I trust I can count on your support. As commander of the Stone Torches, my son Zimberk will personally see it done. Pippin, I would have you lead the raiding party. Assemble your finest, and with Tizona's blade, clear the way. Lord Lollarito, I pray you take charge of the search for Alagon relics. Surely you know of some being traded on open or clandestine markets, or sleeping in collector's vaults. Of course, I ask not that you do this out of the kindness of your heart. By all means, profit on the transactions. I wish you the joy of it. The final days descend upon our world. If circumstances are truly as dire as they say, Uldar's best efforts may be for naught. And yet, when we Eorzeans rose from the ashes to rebuild our broken realm, did we not learn one simple truth? That which seems all but impossible to overcome alone may yet be possible if we stand together. It was the Scions who united us then, and it is the Scions who call upon us now. Uldar will answer that call. We will summon our courage and join the fight for our world's future. You know your duties. I, Nanamo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of all, bid you good luck 
and good speed. We fielded a goodly number, but our ranks are heavy with healers, and an abundance of restorative magics will be of little help in destroying Dalamud's defenses. Still, it has ever been thus with Gridania. We must steel ourselves for a protracted engagement. In that case, might I suggest taking us along? Commander Hext! What are you doing here? None of the shards in Girabania are big enough to hold an internment hulk. So we said to ourselves, why not lend our neighbors a hand? We thought you might be short on people with a talent for breaking things. While it pains me to admit it, you are right. Our artificiency is so plain to see. It might have been a lifetime ago, but I was once one of the Scions assigned to the Shroud. I know this forest well. I know your people. And I know we will be stronger if we fight this fight together. Then I will impose upon you with a clear conscience. Come, let us speak of how to integrate our forces. It'll be for nothing. I promise you, Papalimo. to waste, brother. Everyone has already... Ah.
And so, in summation, the Eastern Alliance, as well as the Honourable Lord Lollarito himself, reached out to me for assistance in procuring these treasures of the divine, and I, in turn, do beseech the Confederacy for aid. Hmm? Is that... Hancock? What a surprise this is. And a fortuitous one at that. I have a favor to ask, you see.